Good morning. Thank you so much for having us. So I'm your first uh, three by ten, and I'm going to jump right into our passage. Um, we are in Acts chapter 20 today. So I'm going to start, and then Jagan's going to carry it on, and then Pastor Greg. So we're going to read, uh, if we can grab that on the screen, chapter 20, starting in verse 13. So here's a little context. So we've seen Paul, and he has been a missionary. He has gone through the whole known world, and he has planted churches and he's raised up local leaders. And the passage that we're reading today is actually his farewell message to a church that he's probably spent the most time in, and that was in the city of Ephesus. So this is his last words to the leaders there. And he actually did something interesting. When Paul spoke, he gathered a huge crowd. Everybody came, but he wanted to really speak to just the leaders. So he said, can you come away with me about 30 miles away to the city of Miletus, and I'll meet you there and share this with you. So let's read. When they arrived, he declared, you know that from the day I set foot in the province of Asia until now, I have done the Lord's work humbly and with many tears. I have endured the trials that came to me from the plots of the Jews. I never shrank back from telling you what you needed to hear, either publicly or in your homes. I have had one message for both Jews and Greeks alike, all of you. The necessity of repenting from sin and turning to God and having faith in Lord Jesus. And now I am bound by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. I don't know what awaits me except that the Holy Spirit tells me in city after city that jail and suffering lie ahead. And this is the verse that I really felt was important to me this morning in verse 24. But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus. And this work is of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. So Paul is saying there's so many good things in the world and he has, he's taught them many discipleship principles, but what is the most important? The most important thing that he wanted to specifically tell them in this farewell message is to finish the race well and do it by sharing the gospel, the good news. Now, if you are new here, I want you to hear the gospel. That's the most important thing. So what is the simplicity, but the most beautiful, profound word of the gospel? That is that God loves you. He loves me. And he created each one of us not to be a distant God far off, but to be close and to have relationship with us. But each one of us was born into sin. We've all done something wrong. We have an internal selfish nature. And so this sin separates us from God because he's not only loving, he's also perfect and he's holy. So to remediate this, he sent his precious son, Jesus Christ, to come on this earth, live a perfect life, and die on the cross in my place, in your place. And so when I come to Jesus, he has the power to, I repent from my sin and he can cleanse me and I can now step into this grace, this gift of salvation and have a relationship with my creator, the purpose that he's given me. And so now my life is no longer meaningless. When I enter into relationship with Jesus, he fills me with his spirit and I am now alive in Christ. Now, when I was praying for the, you and for this message, God reminded me of a story. It's not one I think about often, but it's one that I've always remembered. And it happened a very long time ago in elementary school. Um, it, I grew up not very athletic. Um, I was not, I did not have any experience in team sports. I did not play baseball or hockey or soccer, any of those things. So whenever I came down to you know, gym class recess when they would do that. I'll take you, I'll take you. I hated that because I was one of the last people. Um, but my parents were very athletic in the sense that they would go hiking and, and running. So at that age, I was starting to run. And I remember this moment where these girls came up to me and they were the three most popular girls. They were the most athletic girls, the ones that I was most intimidated by. And they said, Jasmine, would you be on our relay team for the Como Lake Relays? I think that's still happening today. And I was floored. I thought this was a joke because these girls never talked to me, let alone invited me to be part of something. 
but I found out their fourth teammate was injured and they were desperate. <laughs> so they were like, who could possibly do, just run a little bit for us? And so they invited me. And I just remember that moment of being chosen. There's something very special about being picked for a team and knowing you are a valuable member of that team. They need you. Now we did the race, it went well. I was exhausted from my first race and the girls never talked to me after that. We were not friends growing up. But I will always remember that moment um, because it just left that impact. And the reason I share that simple story with you is because as I was praying, I just felt like some of you, you may be a Christian and maybe you've been at this for a long time but you may not have ever heard God call your name and you may not feel like, I don't have a purpose or I don't have a calling. I'm sitting on the bench. I'm sitting on the sidelines and I'm watching everybody else play the game. And this morning I just felt like God is asking,